get-go. The West was never an open space. Land speculators and powerful men always had the advantage in person purchasing the best land. Western land wasn't free, and the poor rarely had the funds to buy the parcels sold by the federal government. Instead, they invaded public lands as trespassers, and the government often had to physically remove them. They became the dominant class of the early republic in the antebellum period that you've never heard of. America's version of English vagrants, squatters, and crackers. Now the I need my black people to understand when exactly was antebellum time. Antebellum was the decade pre-Civil War. So the decade pre-Civil War, the majority of white people was living as squatters. Squatter meaning the majority of white people did not have legal standing here in America and was not afforded access to the Constitution or protection by the Constitution, the same as blacks. meaning. In the British law, which we inherited, squatting was the opposite of standing, to have legal standing. And legal standing also was part of the legal principle, the English legal principle, that justified claims to sovereignty and also justifies the right to the land, to have standing. So we have to understand that white trash owed their American citizenship to black Americans' resistance of our oppression. Because we fought to gain access to the Constitution because we fought for equality in treatment. In order to oppress us, they had to give it to the white trash, who they never before showed any intent in elevating. Hey, so did African American slaves rebel? Of course they did. As early as 1934, our old friend Joe A. Roger identified 33 slave revolts, including Nye Turner in his 100 Amazing Facts. And nine years later, the historian Harbor Aperture published his America Road Negro Slave Revolt to set the record straight. Aperture defended a slave revolt as an action involving 10 or more slaves with freedom as the apparent aim. Con Temporary references labeling the event as an uprising, plot, insurrection, or the equivalents of these. In all, Apatkar says he has found records of approximately 250 revolts and conspiracies in the history of American Negro slavery. Other scholars have found as many as 313. Here's what they're leaving out of history is that black people never consented to being in bondage by white people and we have always raised physical resistance. What they don't want you to understand is that black people want their freedom continuously fighting throughout the South. What they don't want you to understand is that the North was fighting for their own liberation and the emancipation proclamation with the clause that slavery be allowed due to incarceration was them and their intent to transfer our ownership from private to public ownership because it was unsafe for private owners to maintain plantations, too many revolts, too. That is what was actually occurring that created the Civil War on top of the fact that white people was creating unions in the North and they themselves was fighting for their own economic freedom. But they want to make history appear as if us black people were sitting there docile in slavery waiting on white people to free us. 
They gathered at the Stono River and raided a warehouse-like store, Hutchinson ex execution the white owners and placing their victims' heads on the storefront steps for all to see. They moved on to other houses in the area, killing the occupants and burn and burning the structure. Merchant marching through the colonies towards St. Augustine, Florida, where under Spanish law, they would be free. But many were drawn to it, and the insurrection soon numbered about 100. They paraded down King's Highway, according to sources, carrying banners and shouting, Liberty. Glory, you will understand. Now, if you watch films such as Glory, you will understand how much black Americans participated on the northern side from the Civil War, then you also must understand <laughs> how much black people participated in rebellions and revolts on the southern side of the war as well. So black people earned this freedom, won the Civil War, and white people will be rewarded off of our revolting with their citizenship. After the Civil War, many states passed Civil Rights Acts that granted the rights of citizenship to blacks. But some congressmen believed that unless there was federal protection, those state laws could be easily overturned. That's why they proposed the 14th Amendment to the Constitution. Unlike the law of Dred Scott, which says that people of African descent, whether they were slave or free, can't be citizens of the United States. Now the 14th Amendment says that everybody born or naturalized in the United States is a citizen of the United States and entitled to the equal protection of the laws. So you got to understand these white people who are running around waving the Confederate flag, arguing about their rights to their right their constitutional rights to the Second Amendment to bear guns was only given that constitutional rights due to black people fighting for freedom, due to the rebellionness of black slaves.